And then it comes off pretty easy? Yeah. You sure about that? <laughs> Financial technology is getting a lot of attention today. But behind every technology story are people working hard to help advisors build a better business. We're traveling across the country to meet those people and learn why they are dedicated to the success of advisors. These are the innovators. These are their stories. This is FPPAD Tech Tour. FPPAD Tech Tour is brought to you by Backstage Sponsors, InvestNet Tamarack, Orion Advisor Services, and Redtail Technology. With additional support provided by these roadie sponsors. Another financial technology company in Washington, D.C. is InStream, a solution born out of McLean Asset Management's needs for a new way to deliver financial planning. Because of the rain outside, we first met with Alex Murgia, president of InStream Solutions, in McLean's office to learn more about his background in the industry. Alex, we didn't luck out with the rain, which is atypical for FBPAD Tech Tour to be inside an office suite, sure. but I think it tells a little bit of the connection and the story to InStream Solutions being born out of McLean Asset Management. But I want to hear the origins of you and how you connected with McLean and then how you moved into that management position. So tell me about how you arrived at McLean. I got to McLean in a bit of a circuitous manner. From an undergrad standpoint, I didn't study anything that had to do with investments. I was right. actually a... You weren't going to get into wealth management. No, not at all. I was a film major. <laughs> cool. Yeah, yeah, I was actually a film major. And come my sophomore, junior year transition, I realized I have this habit of eating that I want to maintain after graduating. Craft services were <laughs> doing it for no, you? No, it's a deck, so nothing like that. Okay. I had to take uh, you know some electives. And psychology, I figured, was the easiest elective to take. Okay. <laughs> and upon doing that, I actually became enamored with the subject matter. And by the time I graduated, I realized this is what I want to do from a grad school perspective. Around that time, this is 92, 93, Hurricane Andrew had, had hit Miami. I got involved in some research studies with regards to pediatric PTSD and things along those lines. Mm -hmm. And I was enamored with, with the research methodology of it all. And that's important because that's actually what led me to the, the investment side of things. My wife's uncle is a founder of McLean Asset Management. But I, even then, I didn't realize what this business was about. I was envisioning myself going to New York, getting a CFA, and making it big. And uh, I saw working at McLean Asset Management really just a three-month proposition. A few months into it, the realization was, wow, this is a business here. If at the end of the day I wanted to manage assets, you can do that within this framework just as much as you can do that within the, you know, the big bad New York Wall Street firms. Now I bring that back to the, the comment about the research methodology and things along those lines because, in effect, you can go the academic route which is where I was heading, and write research papers, which what you're doing is creating hypotheses and testing them out, you know, from a statistical standpoint and publishing. Or from a business standpoint, you can create hypotheses with regards to how you would run a business and it's effectively what are the gaps, what can you offer, what is your value proposition. There was something about seeing that actualized that really sparked an entrepreneurial bug that I didn't realize I had. Once we got a nice foundation within McLean, the realization was, how can we take this to the next level? The investments were locked down, you know, effectively. The operationalization of the firm was locked down through CRMs and things like that. Mm -hmm. And so it was a matter of, you know, if the biggest value proposition that we provide to clients is guiding a client through a life cycle of financial decisions, not necessarily by Cisco versus EMC or Facebook versus Netflix. Right. It was more than just investments. Yeah, it was significantly more than just investments. The idea idea was, well, I need a tool that can really do this for clients, but do this in a proactive manner. And again, it was no, no different than writing a research paper from the standpoint of what is out there in the landscape. Are there gaps that need to be filled for me to do what we want to do within McLean Asset Management? And the answer obviously was yes from my standpoint. It was let's go out there and prove it out. That's effectively the genesis of uh, InStream. I'm really curious about that point where InStream reached that pivot point where it, for you it may have felt like it's bigger and you needed to yeah. bring in some outside help or professional help yeah, or somebody with a track record to take InStream to the next level. Some of it comes from the standpoint of you just have to know who you are. There's a self-acknowledgement. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? And so forth. And my strengths lie in the, in this, from the standpoint of 
just taking a look at the landscape and really getting a sense of where gaps are filled and, and getting it started, getting enthusiasm around that and testing those initial hypotheses, you know, around in-stream. As you know, we started, let's just put it out there for free. Let's see, let's see who, right. who uses it. I mean, that had a couple of effects. You know, I was testing the hypothesis of, well, let's see what happens. Let's see if we can just get this mass sort of appeal. And I was also testing the hypothesis of, is this something that folks are using? And what we learned from that was effectively, listen, first and foremost, you need to create a planning tool that just knocks it out of the water. Mm -hmm. That sort of honeypot needs to come into place. And so we really needed to flesh that out, you know, to a large extent. And uh, the brain power is there. I mean, we have Wade on board. We have Bob French on board. And so from that standpoint, you know, we have more gray matter than, than anyone out there with regards to putting this together. And so it was from the point of view of, all right, how can we execute this? And really, how can we build this out? you know, in a significant manner. And that's when I ran into fortuitously to John Batovich, who, uh, as you know, within McLean, we use a lot of dimensional funds. Yeah. John was serving as their director of global business development at that time. And he was making a stop by DC. We were friendly and he gave me a call said he was swinging by. And at that point, I just, you know, showed him in-stream just as a general matter. It seems he was in parallel having these same types of thoughts. And it didn't take long for us to put our heads together and, and just think about how we can, you know, tackle these challenges in unison. Outside of McLean and outside of InStream, I think advisors and those in financial services see you in the in conference capacities when you're presenting about McLean sure. methodology and InStream functionality. But what's one of those things about Alex Merguia that not very many people know. At heart, I, there, there, there's nothing there. I'm just a family man. Yeah. The reality is, I enjoy nothing more than just hanging out with my kids on the sofa watching TV on a Friday night. I mean, there's no magic to that. I mean, very simple in, in that regard. Very good. I mean, I do that too with FP Pad Tech <laughs> Tour. My family is yeah, with yeah, me yeah, yeah. for the tour so they can enjoy things all up and down the East Coast. I while, think it's great. While we have conversations just like this. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm just an everyday guy that just wants to watch TV with his kids or play with them on whatever, coach their soccer team. Once the rain cleared up, we moved our discussion to Alexandria to speak with John Botovich, chairman and CEO of InStream, to learn how he believes InStream will play a role in the future of financial planning. Well, we've changed locations and it's still a little drizzly outside, but we spoke with Alex a little earlier about where InStream is today, and certainly you are part of InStream's future. So I want to hear about how you became connected with InStream and what you're looking to do as the future progresses for that product and that platform. It's very interesting we're in Washington because um, for me, my first job out of uh, college was in Washington. Mm -hmm. And ironically, it was as a large system, large account marketing representative for IBM. And my clients were all financial services accounts. Uh, Freddie Mac, Fannie Mae, the Federal Reserve System, and a host of uh, regional banks uh, based here in DC. Mm -hmm. And so it's, uh, it's slightly ironic for me to, that was 30 years ago, to be back in Washington and focused again on financial services technology, which is really what I was doing then as well. Mm -hmm. The rest of my uh, career really after IBM has all been in the financial services arena at Morgan Stanley for about 20 years, right. all in investment banking, most of that in Europe, and eventually one of a handful of people who oversaw the European investment banking business. I had a view at that time, through Morgan Stanley's eyes, of how uh, private wealth advice was given to clients. Right. I then moved on to Dimensional Fund Advisors, um, where I was head of global business development and had a very different perspective, obviously through the eyes of Dimensional and then eventually through the eyes of the independent financial advisor. And that's really what connected uh, Alex and I. Mm -hmm. uh, we got to know each other through the Dimensional connection and then really coalesced around the importance of a plan. Because at the end of the day, as you know, and a, you know, part of your uh, regular commentary, um, the most important thing that an individual can do to better their financial position and hopefully ensure some financial security down the road is plan. Sure, sure. Uh, you know, picking a portfolio, making good investment selections, et cetera, is important, but that's a second order concern. Because mm -hmm. if you don't have a plan, you don't have anything. 
So John, I want you to think about your passion mm -hmm. and how you're applying that to financial planning and the, the benefit of the InStream solution for financial advisors. What we're really passionate about at the end of the day is delivering and empowering the advisor with the best possible uh, information uh, about their client um, that comes out of this living in-stream brain. Um, we believe that at the end of the day, the advisor is you know, such a critical link in translating information, uh, understanding what the client really is looking to achieve. We also believe that in order to make that advisor even more powerful in their role, um, we want to arm them with that best available information. And that's what we're passionate about, is constantly evolving our platform to a place where um, there's more and more thoughtful analytical output, whether mm -hmm. that's around a plan or calculators or eventually artificial intelligence driven thinking and analysis of that information so the advisor has that much more tools, that much more data points, many more data points to work with. I mean, we have a team of 16 developers. Um, all they do every day is um, work with us to think about different ways we can add to this suite of thinking that comes out of out of InStream. Yes, the, the plan and our planning engine is the uh, center of our brain, but we very much view ourselves as an operating system um, for a plan-centric firm. How are you going to push the envelope for the future of this tool for advisors and to apply yourself personally, how are you going to push yourself forward? If I go back to my uh, roots, if you will, at IBM, the whole secret to success at IBM in its uh, you know, 70s and 80s incarnation uh, was something that uh, is you know, generally accepted today, that, that you have to be focused on the real end solution for your client. And you have to start there with a full understanding of the broader strategic uh, goals of your client, sure, sure. the business goals, and then translate that down to what can I do to help you to do this. That is how we are going to continue to drive this business. We've had an enormous amount of success, as you know, with some of the largest and most sophisticated enterprise clients in the advisor space mm -hmm. already, despite the fact that our commercial offering is only 18 months old. Right. And that's really come from the fact that we start our discussions by saying, here's what we have, but what else do we need to do, should we do, to make this um, appropriate and pertinent for your strategic and business objectives? And then further, to say to them, we're happy to bring these additional things to our platform, but our quid pro quo is that we make all of that available to the in-stream population at large. Yeah. So essentially what we're doing is incorporating a sense of best practice and if you want to make it very straightforward crowdsourcing into our philosophical approach. We think we bring a lot to bear with our team, but we also know that there's some extraordinarily powerful thinking out in our client base and we want to tap into that as opposed to try to keep it at bay. And before we concluded the day with InStream, John wanted to make sure he shared a special message with us regarding our desire to raise money and awareness for the Foundation for Financial Planning during FPPAD Tech Tour. Hey ladies and gentlemen, I am taking a quick break from FPPAD Tech Tour content. Here with me is John Vitovich of InStream Solutions. John, I understand you have a special message you want to share with the FPPAD Tech Tour audience. Well, indeed, Bill. We've been following, amongst other things, of the FPPAD Tech Tour, uh, your uh, continued work, great work, on the on the behalf of the Foundation for Financial Planning. That's right, trying to raise money and awareness for the Foundation. We believe so strongly that uh, the financial plan really is um, the most important thing for any individual to do to try to uh, better their financial situation, ensure some degree of financial security, and I think from a public policy vantage point is probably the most single most important thing that can be done to try to address mm -hmm. the retirement crisis. And so to that end, um, it is our pleasure uh, at InStream to announce a uh, $8,000 matching gift. Fantastic. Um, which will be available through the end of this calendar year. Through the end of 2015? Yeah. All right. And um, that is available basically to help you uh, in your efforts uh, on behalf of the foundation to generate 
incremental uh, funding to, to put these financial planning uh, technologies and, and tools in the hands of folks who are doing great work out there on a pro bono basis. Oh, that's that's fantastic, John. So thank you so much for supporting not only FVPAD Tech Tour with the match for the money that we raise, as well as supporting the Foundation for Financial Planning and that the work that they do to increase access to pro bono financial planning nationwide. This is this is awesome. Well, it's it's great for us as well, and thank you so much for making uh, the opportunity available to be supportive of, of what you're doing. Great, thank you, John. And that means, ladies and gentlemen, you should go to the page now, fppadtechtour.com. Scroll down a little bit, there's a donate button. That's where you can donate $5, $20, whatever you can, and up to $8,000. InStream is gonna match those dollar for dollar through the end of the year. John, thank you so much. Thank you, Bill. On the next episode of FPPAD Tech Tour. How we roll. Last day, Washington, D.C.